let's talk about mobile phones. These gorgeous little devices that somehow we now can't live without, me included. I've got everything on my phone, my emails, my calendar, my banking, all of my contacts, and I don't know any of the numbers off by heart except for Johnny's. Um, we have become reliant on our mobile phones. And that's okay. This episode is not a shaming judgment episode. It is my intention, however, to encourage you to become more aware of your mobile phone habit, deciding if that habit is helping you, and then finding a way to change that habit if it isn't. If, however, you love the amount of scrolling and phone time you have, this may not be the episode for you. Have an amazing week. I love you lots and I'll speak to you next week. If, however, though, you find yourself saying to your children, get off your phones. They've, they've always got their head in their screen. And you're saying that whilst you're scrolling on your phone, then just with a lot of compassion, let's look at this together. I reckon most people scroll mindlessly for about two hours a day. I, it probably is actually more than that. When you consider, um, you know, maybe you're sat on the toilet and you take your phone and you scroll. Maybe you're sat in the traffic, traffic lights and you have that urge to check your phone. Um, you know, you're bored in the evening, so you scroll on TikTok or you scroll on Instagram or whatever it is that's your thing. Um, maybe it's YouTube. The first thing that we want to do is become aware of our habits, not from judgment. If you're trying to do this as a judgment and criticizing exercise, it's going to feel really shit and your brain's not going to want to give you the information because it's like, I'm going to get beat up for it. So making the decision ahead of time that actually this is pure fascination, pure awareness, I'm going to do a, a phone audit. Because if you're scrolling mindlessly for say, let's say it's two hours, two hours a day, seven days a week. Well, that's easy math, isn't it? That's 14 hours a week. But if you times that by 52 weeks of the year, that's 728 hours of time that you're spending doing something mindlessly. So the first step is to be aware. So do a phone audit, like be like over 24 hours, just record with absolute fascination how often you pick up your phone. Is it first thing in the morning? And if it is, do you lie in bed and what do you check? And why do you do that? And then, you know, throughout the day, how often do you pick up your phone and scroll? When... When are you maybe with other people? So you're in a you're in a in a group setting, but you're playing on a game or you're scrolling. Now, most of the time, and 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 then do that with the evening again as well. So doing a time audit, like literally minute by minute, how much time do I spend on my phone? Pure fascination. And then you get to decide, is that how I actually want to spend my time? And if it is, brilliant. Stop beating yourself up for it. But if it isn't, we can change it. And it's actually very simple. Not necessarily easy, but simple. So once you're aware of how much time you spend on your phone, now let's, let's look at why you're on your phone. And it will be maybe you're feeling bored and you want entertainment. Maybe you're feeling uncomfortable and you want to escape. Maybe um, maybe you just don't want to do the task that you have to do. So this is a distraction. None of that is a problem. But getting, um, getting clear on why you're scrolling is also really key. 
And then let's get deliberate. So once you become aware and once you've decided what you want to do, now it's about getting very deliberate. So for me, I no longer have my phone in my bedroom. I charge it overnight downstairs in my kitchen. Um, it's always on silent unless I know my boys are out and about and they might need access to me. Um, I don't have any notifications. So I don't have pinging. I don't, I don't actually know when I get a text or WhatsApp um, or, or even a phone call. But what I do have at periods throughout my day is very deliberate time where I go, right, I'm going to go and check my WhatsApp. I'm going to go and check my texts. Have I missed any phone calls? Can I phone them back? And your brain will come up with <laughs> a whole load of, yeah, but what if? What if the school needs to get hold of me? What if, um, you know, I miss out on something? And honestly, in the, let's look at this for a second. So the school phoning. Yes, if your child is at school and they're sick, the school might need to phone you. Of course they might. But when you register with a school, you also register a number of other people that can be contacted in the case of an emergency. And in the 10 years that my children have been at school, I've only had two phone calls where I've actually needed to go and pick them up. And those two phone calls weren't even urgent. So had I had I have waited an hour, it wouldn't have been a problem. They're at school. They're, they are fine. They're with adults that are going to look after them. So the only time I actually have my phone off silent is if my boys are out and about somewhere and they may need to get in touch with me. That's the only time. And people, this pisses people off because if someone wants to get hold of me, I don't pick my phone up. So, or very rarely do I pick my phone up. Um, and p that pisses people off. But I'm okay with that because my phone is not there for their convenience. It's there for my convenience. Oh, imagine if you took that belief on. Your phone is there for your convenience, not other people's requirements, not other people's convenience. We live in a world where we should be accessible 24-7. Bollocks. It's bollocks. Somebody can wait an hour or two hours. It's not a problem. Now, if you're in a role where actually maybe you're a health and safety advisor or, um, well, actually even health and safety, if you weren't able to pick up your phone at that point for, for a genuine reason, what would happen? People would figure it out. Like if something is actually that life threatening, they shouldn't be phoning you. They should be phoning 999. <laughs> so let's just have a lot of compassion with that part of our brain that thinks we need to be available 24 seven. And one of the rules that I've put in place for me is I'm not going to check my phone for the first hour of the day. And sometimes this is challenging because my brain's like, oh, I wonder if someone's phoned me. Oh, I wonder if someone sent a message. Oh, I wonder what the weather's going to be. Now, sometimes I might check the weather, but I'll be very deliberately, right, I'm going to go and check the weather. Boom, off the phone again. But generally, as a rule, not for the first hour of my day because I want to focus on me. Everything that's going on in the outside world is completely irrelevant. Honestly, you and what's going on in your internal world is the most important thing. It determines how you show up for the rest of your day, the type of mum you are, the type of employee you are, the type of friend you want to be. You get to decide what, what you're going to expose your brain and your thoughts to. So I don't look at the news. I don't have updates on my phone. I have no idea who's go what's going on in the world. Things filter through. Now, this isn't a naivety. This isn't me then sitting there going, the world is rainbows and daisies. I know it fucking isn't. I know shit is happening all over the world. Whether I know the facts of it, I don't, I don't need to have that. 
exposed in my brain, especially first thing in the morning or last thing at night. So you get to decide what you expose yourself to. And especially last thing at night, those last things that you hear and that you say to yourself are going to fundamentally impact how you sleep, how you rest, what your brain does when you're asleep. So choosing some rules for yourself, what works for you around your phone screen time. So then I also decide, right, actually, I haven't looked at TikTok for ages, actually. But when I used to enjoy scrolling on TikTok, I used to I used to give myself a very deliberate amount of time. It's like, right, OK, I'm going to sit here for an hour and this is my time on TikTok. This is my time on social media. This is my time to look at YouTube. If you want to do those things, set time aside to do them, honor that time and enjoy it. But if you want to read, if you want to do yoga, if you actually want to spend time being fully present with your children, set those boundaries for yourself. Like one thing that I'm very strict on is when I pick my children up from school, they don't see me scrolling on my phone. The first thing they see is me looking at them and smiling. That's very important to me. I'm not saying you should do this, but you could do this. So you get to decide how you want to use your phone instead of your phone using you. Your phone isn't the boss. You are. Your phone is there to enhance your life, not take over your life. And it's designed to be addictive. It is designed, social media, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, it's all designed to be addictive, to capture you, to tie you in, to keep you scrolling. So don't beat yourself up if you find yourself doing it, but you get to decide, is that how I want to very consciously and deliberately spend my time? And like I said, if it is, then don't beat yourself up for doing it. And please stop moaning that you don't have time for anything else because that's just self-torture. You've got 728 hours. That's only two hours. That's, that's if you're scrolling for two hours a day. So if you're going to choose to go on your phone, then choose to stop moaning about it and beating yourself up for not having time. That fits the optional part. Do it and enjoy it. And if you don't want to do it or if you're not enjoying it, very deliberately choose to do something different. And then it's about addressing the discomfort that comes along with that. Because to begin with, you're going to have the urge to check, just like you have the urge to drink sugar, uh, drink sugar, or you may be drinking sugar, eating sugar, drinking wine, snacking, just so you have the urge to maybe exercise to feel better. You'll have the urge to scroll. And then it's about learning how to sit with that urge. It will only last for 90 seconds if you allow yourself to fully experience it. So just sit for 90 seconds. Notice where it is in your body. Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it fast? Is it slow? What color is it? And breathe. That urge is harmless, completely harmless. You don't have to respond to it. You don't have to get rid of it. You could just sit with it and then choose very deliberately. What do I want to do with my time? Actually, I really want to talk to my child and give them my full attention. I really want to do some yoga. I really want to read this book. Or I really want to investigate that hobby. Give yourself permission to live your life deliberately. And as always, if you need any help with this, I would love to help you. I'm here to help you. So get in touch. Have the most amazing, deliberate week. And I'll speak to you all again next week. Bye.